Hello everyone. Welcome. It's eight o'clock. We'll see if anyone's joining me or if I'm gonna be by myself. Um let's see. Something popped up on my screen here. I don't know what that is. So another day of being quarantined, right? Turn down my volume. All right. Well, even if I'm by my lonesome this evening, there's always the replay you can watch. And I don't know. Get some stamping time in, right? <laughs> So, yeah, I know that um, there's been a big trend now. My girls have been telling me a lot of musical performers are hopping onto Instagram and doing live performances. In fact, tomorrow night, we have um, a friend from long, long, long time ago uh, in college. He's actually a friend of a friend. He's an amazing piano player. He plays. He used to play uh, dueling pianos here in Pittsburgh. And apparently he's going live tomorrow night at eight o'clock and he's going to play the piano and he's going to take requests and he's so good. He can play, you can just tell him a song and he will just play it by ear. He just, he knows it. He's that good. And he's playing from eight to 10 and I think it's Eastern time on its Facebook page. So I really want to see it. I love piano music. I am a piano player myself. I used to play for my school's um, chorus, and I used to play for my church, um, the pipe organ too. Yep, I knew the pipe organ. I actually went to pipe organ camp when I was in high school, <laughs> and I had a good time. I had a really good time. So yes, I guess you could call me an old soul. I like things like that. Hi, Holly. I was just talking about uh, Danny McElroy playing the piano tomorrow night live on his Facebook page and how much I wanted to see that. So... I hope I don't miss it. Um, so, I don't know. Talk to me about what you guys have been doing with your day. Um, today, yeah, I mean, I'm going to stamp tonight, that's for sure. But today, uh, Elena and I took Lily on a long walk. We found a couple new trails by our house. And just, it felt good to be outside being silly with her. I mean, any mom that can be silly stupid with her 14-year-old daughter... And her 14-year-old daughter is enjoying her company back. I felt proud of myself. I was giving myself high fives, pats on the back. Because I was having a good time with her. And she was having a good time with me. So, um, what else did I do? The paper pumpkin kit that I did last night. <laughs> Hi, Ollie. The paper pumpkin kit I did last night. I did a couple alternative projects for it. Because I know people like to see that kind of thing. Like what else they can do with their stamping kits. So I started doing some work on that. And I'm so excited about the ideas I came up with. So excited. Lots of bright colors. Um, Brian, my husband, just came off the Whole30 diet. You guys familiar with the Whole30 diet? It's... 30 days, no sugar, no carbohydrates, no grains of any kind, no, what else am I forgetting? No beans, um, no dairy products. Yeah, for 30 days. And I do all the cooking and shopping in the house. So it fell on me to get to conform him to this diet. So and it actually, I didn't follow it. So I can't, I can't say it was hard. He successfully did it. And he was doing it to try to see if it would clear up some health issues, but all it did was make him have absolutely zero en energy at all. Now, to be fair, he got sick for a few weeks with it, so I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but I will tell you, they call it the sugar dragon, slaying the sugar dragon, and it's supposed to kill all your cravings too. <laughs> he knew the 30 days was Tuesday. Tuesday came, the first thing he ate was breaded chicken strips and uh, crackers, I think. Yeah. And then tonight we had biscuits with creamy chicken noodle soup that I made. So <laughs> it didn't kill any cravings for him. <laughs> Just made him want it more, I think. So I don't know, but I'm thinking maybe I should go off the sugar myself because, ah, mom steel is watching. Hello. <laughs> How are you guys doing in Ohio? They're on a total lockdown there. Total lockdown. So yeah, I'm thinking I should try the Whole30 myself, or at least the no sugar part of it, right? Because I have a raging sweet tooth. I 
absolutely loves sweets. So I don't know. I don't know. Have you guys ever done Whole30? Have you ever given up sugar or anything like that? I don't know if I can do it. It might be a little bit hard. Um, so what else? Um, oh, the funny memes. Are you guys seeing all the funny memes on Facebook? And maybe you're seeing them on Instagram too, but I don't go on Instagram all that much. They are hysterical. What was the funniest one I saw? Was a John Travolta one where it said, John Travolta went to the doctor with reports that he had COVID-19, but it turns out he just had Saturday night fever and doctors assured us that he will be staying alive. <laughs> that made me die laughing. <laughs> and then there was another one. It would be hard to give up sugar. I, I know. I have a drawer right here, right in my desk. And you guys, look at this. I have this. I have five of those. I have five of these and I have five of these in my desk drawer right beside my stamping. Yeah. I sit here in the afternoon. Sorry, I dropped something. I sit here and you know what? There used to be Reese's fast breaks in there and I ate them all. I ate them all. It was bad. So yeah. <laughs> so the, oh, the memes, the memes. Um, there was another one too, where it was, uh, the, um, Oh, is it the boy? Oh, the boy I hired to clean up the poop in my yard just realized I don't have a dog. Hashtag ran out of toilet paper. <laughs> that was good. Oh my gosh, that one was so funny too. And then my uncle posted one about, he was in Walmart and he asked, well, this is a meme. Uh, I was at Walmart the other day and I asked one of the employees uh, in what aisle the nuts were in and he said the toilet paper aisle. Yeah. <laughs> What are you going to do? You have to laugh at everything, right? So I've been amusing myself with all those funny memes. So if you know any, is there a way to post them in the comments? I don't know. Oh, hi, Brian. He's watching. <laughs> you know what, Holly? I call it my secret stash, but it's not a secret. Everybody knows it's there. And so they come to me and ask me when they want chocolate. Yeah. I actually have another basket filled with candy, too, because when I hold my stamping classes, I always make little treat holders for everybody. And I put one in each spot. And so I have an entire basket filled. But you know what? I stay away from that because I know it's for my class attendees. So I, I know not to touch that. But yeah. So what are you going to do? You're going to laugh, right? you got to laugh at that. But if, is there a way to post memes in the comments? Because I sure would like to read some more. They're highly amusing. So, but okay. So that is what is going on. Um, yeah. So I'm going to flip this camera down so we can start making the projects just sit back, relax, zone out, you know, whatever you want to do, comment, hit the heart button, share this, whatever. Um, if you're watching the replay, thank you. You know what? I should introduce myself. Did I do that? I'm Nicole Steele. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I am the owner of The Joyful Stamper. I love to stamp. I love to paper craft. I love what I do, and this is just for fun tonight, but you know what? If you feel like doing a little retail therapy, I'm not going to stop you. You can go to shopwithnicole.stampinup.net, shop to your heart's content, and I will be eternally thankful, and I will send you a thank you gift. So, all right, I'm going to flip the camera down. If you get dizzy doing that, just close your eyes, and here I go. I'm always nervous that I'm going to accidentally hit the stop button when I do this. Okay, I'm almost there. I got it. If you close your eyes, you can open your eyes now. All right, and now I will switch to using my laptop. Okay, so we have two projects tonight. I will show you both of them. This is them. This is actually, this. Cu it's a cute little bag. You can untie it and you can put something inside. Let me untie it. Um, I'm gonna use these for my treat holders for my April library class. It's pretty roomy in there, but I have some M&Ms, full-size packages of M&Ms I'm gonna put in there. And then I have, oops, that's upside down. I have this card right here. And these both use the same stamp set. This one right here, Tags and Bloom. And this is a freebie in the Celebration catalog, the second release. And they're photopolymer. 
so it's really cool because there's a stamp that you stamp the outline of them and then there's another stamp where you can just stamp the color in there so hi Marianne thanks for joining me tonight I'm so glad you guys are here feel free to chat and talk away because my family's been doing schoolwork and work work all day and I could sure use some conversation so yeah so which one should we start let's start with the bag first I kind of like that one kind of like that one. before I make these projects I always take an old piece of cardstock and I make myself a template just so I don't mess up so that's what I did here so um, I might be referring to it but in any case it's six inches by 12 inches and these would actually be really cute as shower gifts or party favors graduations are coming up it could be a gift card holder too you could plop a little gift card holder in there hi Marilyn it's good to see you again I mailed your stamp set out yesterday by the way so we are starting at six inches by 12 inches and I am using the adorable pleased as punch designer series paper this is the tulip side which you can use the tulip builder punch to punch those leaves and, and tulips out but I'm gonna have my bag use this one I love the distressing on that so I'm gonna grab my scoreboard here and if I go out of camera just give me a holler okay and I'm gonna follow my template so it's six inches by 12 inches and I'm going to score at four inches and at five and three quarters of an inch and at nine and three quarters of an inch and at 11 and a half inches. And then I'm going to turn it this way. And we call this scoring on the short side. I'm gonna score it at one and three quarters of an inch. Just like that, okay. Now, I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I know I'm supposed to use everything Stampin' Up! But I bought this scoreboard long, long, long time ago. So, just pretend it says Stampin' Up! up there instead of Martha Stewart. All right? All right, so we have this, and now we're going to trim it down. So, let me flip my template over here. There's this little section right here, this little scored off section. I'm going to cut that piece away. And I'm cutting on the score line up to this one and three quarter inch score line. And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to snip that piece out right there like that. Okay, so we have that. Then I'm going to cut on these score lines here. So I'm not much of a 3D project kind of girl but I'm in need of them. So I've really stretched myself lately to come up with 3D projects, but I'm just curious, do you guys scrapbook or do you do 3D projects or are you card makers? You have a scoreboard too, is that what you're talking about, Marilyn? Yeah, I didn't think I needed one and then I realized it really comes in handy with 3D projects. I'm gonna apply tear and tape now. Now whenever you're making a 3D project, like a bag or a box, you're gonna wanna use a really strong adhesive so it doesn't come apart on you because if you put something in there and it falls apart, that's no good, that's no good. So I'm gonna put some tear and tape on this piece right here. And you're gonna put the tear and tape, it's a little half inch flap over there. You're gonna put the tear and tape on the pattern that you are going to have facing out on your bag. And then I'm gonna put some tear and tape on this one right here. You know what I have trouble with? I always feel like I need to go super, super fast when I do these projects because I feel like everyone's in a hurry. Everyone's in a hurry. But you know what? It's 8 o'clock at night. I don't operate at that speed at this time of night. So it's going to be a little bit slower, a little bit more relaxed. Okay, so now we're going to fold on all the score lines. Yeah, so um, doing this ahead of time before I peel all the, the liner off of that tape. Okay. So I got now what I'm going to do is fold this half inch flap in and then I'm going to peel the liner tape off and I'm going to fold my paper to adhere it like that. That's much, much easier to do than to try to make your box three dimensional and then glue it. So I'm just folding it in half and I'm going to put it on there like that. Now when I go like this, maybe you'll see how it's coming together. See how it's going to come together like that? 
Okay, so now this is the bottom of the box. I'm gonna fold those two small flaps in, and then this is the flap that has the tear and tape. I'm gonna peel that liner tape off. And, whoop, started to rip my paper there. See how strong that tear and tape is? I accidentally started to peel the adhesive off that tore the paper. So I have the two small flaps folding in. You know what? I forgot to turn my light on. Let me do that real quick. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so I fold the two small flaps in. I thought it looked a little dark. Then this is the flap with the adhesive, and then I'm folding the last bottom flap in. And then what you can do is flip it right side up, and you can take your bone folder, take the, the rounded end, not the pointy end, and just push it along the bottom there to get it to stick. There we go. So there's the box. And then I'm going to take a hole punch, and you can just use any office supply punch, but you're going to pinch the edges in just like this. Okay, and we're gonna make two punches right on that edge. I have both sides pushed together, and we're gonna make one punch and another punch, and that's where our ribbon is gonna get threaded through. Okay, now we're gonna set that aside because we need to stamp and assemble this. So this is a piece of blush, uh, blushing bride card stock, and I used our layering circles dies to cut this out. So this isn't a scallop. And then this is just a piece of Whisper White cardstock. And again, I am using this Tags and Bloom Celebration freebie set. So this is free with a $100 order, and it's got lots of cute little pieces in it. So you can create quite a nice, lovely scene with it. And I'm going to use this stamp right here with Memento Black Ink. Now the reason I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink is because I'm going to be using my Stampin' Dimensionals. So I'm going to do a little bit of coloring tonight. So I hope you're in the mood for some relaxing coloring. Yeah, I'm pretty much, I'm a morning person. I wake up about 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Usually I go to the Y to work out, but they're closed. So I switched up my Bible time and I am reading my Bible uh, at that time of day. And, and then I'm gonna stamp wishing you the best in the middle. And I've been taking walks later on in the afternoon or in the later morning. But I watch Jeopardy at seven o'clock every night and by the time it's over, <laughs> so am I. <laughs> so, this is pushing me, I'm being a party animal doing this at 8 o'clock at night. But that's what a quarantine will do. Have you seen the things about quarantinis? I'm not a drinker, but they're making up these drinks called quarantinis. I have no clue what's in them. I don't even know what's in a martini. Stampin' Blends. If you've never used Stampin' Blends and you've wanted, always wanted to learn, now you can see how. I don't claim to be like an expert. There are some really good colors out there. I'm just somebody that really enjoys using them and I've used them over and over and I think I'm doing a pretty good job at it. So here's the colors we are using. Light and Dark Highland Heather, right there. And we're gonna use Light Flirty Flamingo and we are going to use Light and Dark Granny Apple Green. Don't you like those colors together? They're gorgeous. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the flower. And I like to color most of the time with the bullet tip rather than the brush tip. The other end's a brush tip. And I uncap both of them at the same time. Now you don't want to leave them uncapped a long, long time, but just to color this is going to be fine. So our memento ink should have dried by now. It's This is purely a matter of personal preference. I like to start with the light colors myself. And you work in small sections at a time. The reason being, alcohol dries fast. And if I want it to blend, I need it to stay wet so it's blendable. So I'm working in small sections at a time. I colored with the light, then I added a little bit of the dark Highland Heather. I went over it again with the light, and I'm gonna add a little bit more dark at the bottom there. And I'm gonna go over it again with the light just to blend the colors out. Do you see how that goes from dark to light? Yeah, 
It's really good. You cannot do that with regular Stampin' Write markers. Those are water-based dye ink, and they're not blendable. Now, you can watercolor with those Stampin' Write markers, but you can't blend and shade like you can with these alcohol ink markers. They're two different types of inks. Now, if you were to ask me, say, Nicole, Miss Joyful Stamper, I can't get both sets of markers. So, which ones do you recommend? Well, it depends on what you want to do. If you like to watercolor and color on your stamps, I would get the Stampin' Write markers. If you just like coloring like this, coloring in line images, get the blendables, or get the blends, I mean, which are these alcohol ink markers. So you have to think about what you want to do. And if you're still not sure, just ask me. I can help you. Hello, Mike. I heard your gym closed also, just like mine. But, did you know there's YMCA 360 on YouTube? So we can still get our boot camp time in. Alright. Does anybody know any jokes or anything? I like to laugh. My favorite thing is laughing, which sounds pretty stupid, but you'd be surprised at the number of people that don't like to laugh or don't find things funny. So, okay, now I'm going to start with this rose over here. Is it a rose? I don't know. It's a flower bud, right? Yeah. You know what? You know what's making me happy right now? The rain outside. We're supposed to get two to three inches of rain tomorrow. And I am happy. Rainy days are my favorite. I feel like Buddy the Elf when I say that because he's like, smiling's my favorite, smiling's my favorite. But I love rainy days. They're just perfect for all the things that I absolutely love to do. Now here's something. Um, we have what's called a color lifter. It's white like this. If you go outside the lines or you say, oh, that's a little bit too dark, you can take this and you can kind of push the ink around with it and it'll lighten the area that you're using it on. So if you go outside the lines you can use this to push the ink back in and it'll get rid of that little smudge there. So, Okay, and now I'm going to cap these back up because I'm finished using them. And Well, I'm not finished using the light one. Now I'm going to use the light flirty flamingo to color the flower center. Just like that. And then I'm going to go back in with the light Highland Heather to touch up those little dots. I don't really know if my flower is accurate or not, but I like the colors together. I think it's pretty. I'm going back over with the light flirty flamingo. Then I'm going back in with dark Highland Heather to kind of do that. Now again, I just want to tell you, reiterate, there is no right or wrong. Stamp a bunch of images. Practice while you're watching TV. Try different color combinations. It's okay. Okay. That's light uh, granny apple green. And this is dark granny apple green. And now I'm going to blend it by going back in with the light granny apple green. Okay. And I'm going back again like this. Okay, and I'll do these other flowers here. Now in the next project we're going to make, I will show you that you do not have to color these images in. There are stamps in this set that will fill in the color for you. So you don't have to do this, but I just thought this looks so pretty. And you know what, I like to show you different ways to use what you have. Because don't we all like to get the most out of our craft supplies, right? So it's good to see different ways of using them. Okay, and I've been on a Wink Estella kick lately. So I'm going to take my clear Wink Estella and I'm going to add a little bit of shimmer to this flower. And oh, look at that. Oh, the joyful stamper needs a catchphrase like Emerald. With Emerald, he has BAM! I need something. For my stamping because when I do something like that mm, it's so pretty okay so oh I know what I forgot to do I took my light flirty flamingo marker 
and I took the brush tip this time and I'm gonna scribble right over that sentiment just to highlight it just like that there we go I think that highlights it really nice without using it in a different color okay now believe it or not I am gonna fussy cut this and I'm gonna be honest with you there is actually a punch in the mini catalog that punches this shape right here out but I don't have it I'm not a big-time demonstrator that has every single thing in the catalog so just like probably most of you I make do with what I've got I buy myself new things but I don't buy myself everything however I will tell you if you do have an ordinately long wish list you ought to consider joining my team of joyful stampers because it's only $99 I just had somebody do that recently because her wish list was so long and she wanted the discount and she wanted all the freebies the paper trimmer the paper sampler the expensive stamp set um, yeah she wanted all of that $125 of product there you go just like that and then this is gonna get glued to the scallop circle and I'm just gonna use liquid glue for this okay just like that and we're gonna put that on there okay this is looking pretty I usually make seven I can only have seven in my classes so I make seven treat holders so I will have five more to go like this do you guys like mass do you mass produce anything do you like to mass produce your stuff some people don't I'm gonna use tear and tape on this I don't mind it sometimes it's nice to just get into that mindless groove because you can listen to music and stuff or watch videos like from the joyful stamper while you're doing mass productions okay I'm using tear and tape to attach this because when I pinch this box in it's gonna create a little bit of a curvature to the front of it and I don't want this to pop off okay so I'm gonna apply that and put it on like that okay and then I am taking this super duper cute whisper white polka dot tool ribbon and I'm gonna thread it through here now did you know you can also use those same stamp and blends that we use to color this flower you can use them to color this ribbon I have a blog post um, it was from a couple months ago and it was a celebration card so if you do a search for celebrate um, it should pop up you could also do a search for I think techniques or tips and it will come up on there oh you like that idea about the ribbon Marilyn yeah the Stampin blends are a really good way to um, get the ribbon the color you want it to okay I'm a little bit of fumble fingers tonight I can't seem to get it through <laughs> through here <laughs> I am having trouble I may have to do this part off camera because it is just not going or else maybe I'll just um, punch a bigger hole I think that's what I might do if I can find my hole punch um, I had it here a second to go okay well this is the beauty of live that there it is yeah I just made an Easter card actually a little bit ago and I used the very vanilla gold metallic edge ribbon and I colored it with a dark blackberry bliss stamp and blend and it turned out so I was so happy with how it turned out so happy okay there we go we cut the other end off and we're gonna put this through this side okay I don't know why that was so problematic for me Maybe my fingers are too big. And then you can just tie it in a bow just like this. And there you go. This one I untied. I'll have to tie that one back up. I was trying to show you the inside of it, but aren't those pretty? Yeah, so now I have five more that I get to make. And also, this is a really good project for using up all that designer series paper that you probably have on hand because it uses a 6 inch by 12 inch sheet. So you can get two of these boxes from each 12 by 12 inch piece of designer series paper. So um, I'm not a paper hoarder. 
I have no problems cutting into it and using it up, but I still have a lot of it. So I was really excited when I stumbled across this project. So that is project number one for tonight, using the Tags and Bloom stamp set. Okay, now we are going to move on to project number two, which is this card right here. And I kind of battled with the colors of this, and I'm not going to lie. So I might need your opinion, because I had two choices that I came up with at the last minute. So you can give me your opinion on them. All right. When the time comes. Let me get my other piece here. Okay. So this card, we are going to start. This is this is a good good cardstock to have as your core in your core collection. It's our thick whisper white cardstock. It makes an excellent card base and it's really economical versus using colored cardstock. So this is a five and a half inch by eight and a half inch piece of thick whisper white scored down the middle at four and a quarter. And I'll go ahead and fold it. And this piece is also from the Please Just Punch Designer Series paper. This is the back side. And you can use the punches from our heart part heart punch pack in the mini catalog to punch these hearts out but I'm gonna use this um, buffalo check side here and this is blushing bride and I'm gonna adhere it to my card base with liquid glue now this is something I actually don't think to do very much is to cut a piece of designer series paper to the full card front size of five and a half by four and a quarter and glue it to the front of my card I don't know why I never think of it Okay, so we're going to completely cover our card base. I just moved the paper. Let me put this back on. All right. Here we go. So if you guys have any stamping tips or tricks to share with me, let me know. I'm always interested in hearing them. Okay, so we have that. Um, now what I am going to do... You know what I realized? I forgot to cut a piece of vellum for my card, so I'm going to have to go grab that. To, um, to get it. So, okay. Next, we are going to take a piece of Whisper White cardstock, and I'm going to use that same stamp as on the last project to stamp on this. So, I'm going to use Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and I'm going to stamp it right on here, just like this. And this time, the sentiment I'm going to use is Sending Hugs. I know a lot of people that could use a card that says sending hugs. I'm, I'm thinking of my grandmother right now. She fell, oh my goodness, I think it's two months ago now, and she cracked the vertebrae in her back. And she was in the hospital for three weeks, and now she's been in rehab for, oh my word, it's got to be at least three or four weeks now. And she's still doing physical therapy. She's 89 years old. She said it is the hardest thing she's ever done in her life. The hardest thing. Okay, now, instead of using markers or watercoloring to color in these flowers, I'm going to use these stamp images. If you see these solid images right here, those are meant to fill in these detailed or line art images. They are shaped so that they will fill them in perfectly. So that's what we're gonna use for these cards and I'm going to use Calypso Coral ink and I'm going to fill in this larger flower first so I'm going to tap it in there and let me see I might get my head in the camera so that I can see where I'm stamping here okay there it is and then I'm going to use those I'm going to fill in those leaves and I'm going to use pear pizzazz ink for the leaves So we have these set of leaves right here, and that is going to fill in this set right here. And then we have these leaves that's going to fill in the stem. Okay, that one I went a little bit off, but it'll still be okay. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I want to stamp four of those little flowers there. So I need to pull out piece of scratch whisper white paper. How do you guys store your scraps? Oh, hi Jen. 
I use page protectors to store my scraps. I know that's a common problem with stampers. Oh, you know what? I meant to do that in black ink. Let's start over. We're doing a do-over. Okay, I'm going to stamp these in basic. Look at that. Sugar britches. Not working out. Okay, we got one there. Let's just do a few more. One. Two. Yes, the sentiments in this set are really nice. Do you have this set already, Marilyn? I know it's a little bit of a higher reach to get it because it's with $100, but I know it's also been a really popular one. All right, and now I'm going to ink this. Now I'm going to ink this up with Calypso Coral, and I'm going to fill the color in. And I'm just going to go in circles like that, turning it. So I can fill it all the way in and I kind of like how there's a little bit of white showing. Now you can try to line this up perfectly because it will it will do that. But I'm not so much concerned with that. So and then I'll do this one here like this. Okay. I'm liking how that's turning out. We put that aside. All right, and again, I went ahead and I cut all of these out. I probably should have cut those other flowers out ahead of time, but it'll go fast. So when I'm doing my classes, I, I like to stamp quotes on my cards. There's a lot of great stamp sets that have just quotes. And I like using them because then I'm like, oh, I can send those cards for any reason. I've got a stash on hand ready to send out to somebody. But I find that in my classes, people really like very specific sentiments like happy birthday, happy anniversary. Um, what other ones would there be? Thank you. Thank you cards. Um, so I don't know. Do you have a preference? Like if you were going to a class, would you want your card to be really, really specific like that? Or are you okay with having quotes? Maybe it, maybe that's because I read so much. And that's why I like quotes. If I see a quote that I like, I write it down. I have a notebook I keep of quotes. My 17-year-old daughter does this too. Oh yeah, so Jen, is Kaylee home now? They shut, um, they shut the school down. We had to go up and get Emma. She was none too happy about that. Which, I was happy having her home, but I have to admit, I felt kind of bad that <laughs> she wasn't happy about coming home. I was like, oh, she'd rather be with her friends. She's 19, the nerve of her preferring them to her mother. I gave her life. So, um, actually, Emma has a couple friends, though, that are staying up at school because they live in hot spots. And their parents told them not to, uh, not to come back. It was safer to be at school. Crazy, crazy stuff, huh? It's amazing how life can change on a dime. But we're just making the best of it. Everybody's excited because we're eating pizza on a Thursday instead of on a Saturday. You use a lot of thinking of you, yeah. Yeah, that's a, those, those are the ones I send out the most, actually, thinking of you. There's a group of people from our church that I write to every month, and that's I usually use things like that because I love, love writing inside of cards. I can write forever. Okay, now what I'm going to do on this piece is I'm going to take, now this is a stamp and Write marker. This is not the blends, the alcohol marker. This is the one I was talking about that's water-based. You could watercolor with it, color on your stamps with it. I'm going to use the brush end of this and I'm going to flick some splatters on there. So you use your cap, use the brush tip, put the brush tip just slightly in there and then you're going to flick it down just very like that. And you get some nice splatters. Now you can't do this obviously with a dry marker. It's got to have some fairly fair amount of ink in there, but you get these really cool splatters. And I like what it adds to the card. So, okay. 
So we've got that on there. We've got our flowers. I've got my card here. Now here's the thing. I forgot my vellum. So, and I don't have it sitting right here with me. But here's the dilemma. I don't know which color I like better. Calypso Coral or Grapefruit Grove with the blushing bread. I'm going to go grab my vellum real quick. You can think about it and you can let me know. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with my vellum. And let's see what size piece I want. I'm just reaching into my scraps here, seeing what I've got that will work just fine with it. I think this one will work. That's a good size. So I don't know, did you guys decide which ones you like better, Calypso Coral or Grapefruit Grove? I used Calypso Coral on my original card. So I don't know. There's that, so it would look like that, or it would look like this. Hmm, I think I might try it with Grapefruit Grove this time, just for a different look. So this one's gonna get glued down first, the larger circle. I'm gonna just use multi-purpose glue with it. Squirt some of that down, put that on there like that. And then I'm going to put my piece of vellum over top of it, and I'm going to use snail to adhere it. Oh, you like the coral. <laughs> oh, I already went ahead with the grapefruit grove. We'll have one of each. I'm going to trim this down a little bit. It's a little bit too long. There we go. And I'm going to use snail. Just run it right down the middle because it's going to get hidden. And I'm going to put it right there. And I actually think I might have cut a little too much off, but that's all right. Okay, now I'm going to glue this one down. I'm going to overlap it slightly so it's right there. Okay. And now I'm going to take, get my supplies. I have a piece of this lace. Now this is another, another embellishment you can color with Stampin' Blends. It takes to it very nicely. You're so good. Holly, how's your job going? Aren't you full time now? Okay, I put a glue dot on that and I'm gonna, let's see. What did I do on my last card? I put it like right there. So I'll put it right on the edge. And then I'll put another glue dot. Let's use a paper piercer for this. Brian does not go back to work till April 1st. He says it's really, our house is really small, 1,200 square feet, and all five of us are here. And Brian is getting frustrated a little bit with us working because he can hear every time we walk around and where, I have a glue dot stuck to my nail. <laughs> and whenever he's um, in the back basement, which you think would be the quietest part, mm -mm. every time someone turns on the hot water, the hot water tank fires up. So if he's on conference calls, it gets really loud or the furnace kicks on. <laughs> Poor guy. He's in a house full of women and, and a dog, a female dog. He can't escape the hormones. Oh, you're work. Yeah. You're working from home now too. Yeah. Are your boys doing uh, online learning? I know that's what the Emma starts her online learning on Monday. Emma and, and Caitlin and Elena, who are still in high school, they are doing online learning. And Elena's like, oh, this is kind of nice. It's like homeschooling. We went for a walk in the middle of the afternoon. All right, now I'm going to tie a piece of linen thread in a bow. And there we go. Now, I find that this little skinny stuff like this, the rib, the bow part always flips and curls on me. So if anybody out there has a tip for not getting it to do it, let me know. As of now, I just hold the knot down as I pull the strings to adjust it. And that seems to, seems to work. I just love when these little tails curl like that. Ooh, it's really the little things in life that excite me. Okay. Matthew's online. Does he like it or is he lonely? I know his track season got canceled, huh? 
But it's always fun going to watch all those meets. What events was he running anyways? Emma was supposed to run three track meets. Gannon doesn't really have a track program, but they were signed up for three meets. Okay, I'm going to put this right here. And you see how, I don't know if you can see that, this snail adhesive for, that I used to adhere the vellum. This is going to cover this. So you won't, you won't even see it. And now these flowers, I'm going to crumple them up a little bit because I like dimension when I make stuff. I love the layers. Love it, love it, love it. You, I have a card I'm posting. What's today? Is today Wednesday? Yeah. I think it's on Friday. I have a card I'm posting. It is layered like overboard. Overboard. I went over the top with it because that's what I like to do. And I'm going to stick that there. And let's put this one here. The 800, the 400, the... Wow. So he's like maxed out on all four. That's kind of like what I ran in college and high school. Yeah. I love the 800. I miss it. Now that I'm watching Emma do all this stuff, I'm like, man, those were good times. Those were really good times. We got that, and I don't know, where should I put the other one? Hmm. Sometimes I'm a little indecisive. Maybe down here, and then maybe I'll forget that one. I think I might forget that one. Or I don't know, would it be too much to put that up there? Let's think about it. We'll think about it. Okay. You know what I think would be really fun? Maybe you wouldn't think so. But if I had enough people on here, you, I could come on here and you could tell me what you want me to create. Like, give me the name of the stamp set. Give me, um, these are, by the way, gold faceted gems. I like the antique look of them. They're going to be my flower, oh, they're going to be my flower centers. But like, you could give me the name of the stamp set. You could give me the colors of paper and ink. And I think it would be really fun to just create on the fly like that, like totally what you tell me to do and just see what we come up with. So, okay. And I'm going to add some little gold metallic pearls. I'm going to cover the center of that one. These things are tiny, 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 tiny. So a paper piercer or take your pick tool come in handy when doing this. And you get gold and silver of these little pearls in a package. So you get both metallics. Okay. I don't know. Should I put this flower somewhere? Tuck it somewhere? I don't know. What do you think? Or is it just like that one thing where like I say more is more when it comes to card making, but I don't know when to stop. So... Hmm, what did it look like without it? I'm thinking more is more, so I'm going to add it. I'm going to add it. Okay. There we go, and we need one more faceted gem. Now these faceted gems come in clear also, not just gold, but that's a separate package. But of course I have it. Okay. So there we go. There's the two cards. Yikes. The two cards. There's the boxes. Actually, I don't need both of them. So we'll just put those. That is what we have made tonight. Add it. I did, Holly. I added it. <laughs> I went for it. This is me living on the wild side. Yes, this is as crazy as I get, let me tell you. So, those are the two projects. Thank you so much, guys, for keeping me company tonight. I'm going to go live again tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have it planned out. I do have another celebration set, however, so I'm thinking it's the one with the little mugs and the coffee and the tea so I'm thinking I will use that one because it's brand spanking new and I haven't used it yet so if you can join me I would love it 
If you want to shop, shop with Nicole.StampinUp.net. Use this host code and I'll send you a March class bundle tutorial. And I thank you so much for joining me. Hit the subscribe button. Wait, no, we're not on YouTube. We're on Facebook. <laughs> so, <laughs> Woo. okay. So anyways, thanks for joining me, guys. And I will see you tomorrow night and be sure to share this. All right, bye.